Are you having a hard time working from home? It can be an extremely difficult thing to do if you're not used to it. I've been doing it for the last 12 years. I'm gonna share with you the tips and tricks on how I do it effectively and efficiently every single day. Welcome to the Josh Gerben Show, because law school didn't teach business. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to The Josh Gerben Show, our second quarantine edition. Today, as you can see, I have my sidekick with me. This is Jake. He is my second child, and he's going to be turning five years old in just a few days. And we've been working from home, Jake, for a little while now, haven't we? Mm -hmm. What do you think about having Dad at the house all the time? Good. You enjoying it? We having fun? Yeah. So it can be a challenge, right? I have to run a business, and... We want to take good care of our kids, so I'm going to go over the things that I do every single day uh, to effectively work from home and make sure that I can be with my family at the same time. Uh, so the first tip I have for you is you need to pick an ideal spot to work that is arguably secluded in your house. I'm fortunate enough in my house to have an office that I can close the door to. Not everybody's going to have that. So if you don't have a home office where you can set up a workstation, you need to find the most secluded point in your house. This could be a bedroom that you may go into in the morning and use as an office um, once you know, everybody's up and out for the day. But having that dedicated workspace is incredibly important because then everybody in your house knows when you're in that space that you're working. Jake, how many times a day do you think you come to my office? Uh, one. Right, you come in here, but you know if I'm in here, I'm working, right? So then you guys know when I'm out of here, I'm not working, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, but then you come in here to check on me every now and then still, right? Yeah. Um, now the second thing I do is you have to really keep a daily schedule. Very easy when you have to show up at the office at nine and leave by five, you know what your workday is gonna look like. From home, that's not always as obvious, right? but you need to make it as obvious. Your whole, not only do you need the schedule, your family needs to know your schedule so that everybody can respect it. So in my case, I start work at 7.30 in the morning and then I eat lunch around noon and then I'll have play time, outside time with the kids, typically between two and three. And Jake, what do we do when we go outside? Play baseball. Oh, and don't forget Vanishing Daddy. And Vanishing Daddy, right. Daddy hides sometimes. <laughs> But we have this very set schedule every single day that is consistent. So not only is it good for me to know when I can work and what I need to get done within that window of work, but my kids know when they can come and play with me and when I have to be working. The one thing that goes along with this is my third tip, which is that you should gather all the food and water and beverages you need for a half a day at a time. So in the morning, I take my breakfast, any snacks, water, coffee that I need into my office. This ensures a couple of things. One, that I'm not going back to the refrigerator every 30 minutes to load up on snacks and whatever's in there because that's not healthy. But two, out of sight, out of mind, right? If I'm walking through the house and the kids see me, I have a two-year-old. How old is uh, Josh has turned two, right? Yeah. Yeah. And if Josh sees me, he doesn't know I'm still working. So it's very hard to walk through the house, see your two-year-old son and say, hey, I have to go back to work. He wants to play. So if I keep everything in my office for half a day at a time, I don't have to be leaving that room to come out and disturb the family, whatever's going on. The fourth tip is that you need to invest in an ergonomic workstation. If you're gonna be working from home for any period of time, it's really important you protect your body. Um, this means getting a good chair, investing in a good chair, and especially investing in a standing desk. I highly recommend standing desks because you can you know, get up and down during a day. It's not a good thing to just sit for eight, 10 hours. You need to be able to stand while you're working too. And so they make, um, the, one I would, the one I would tell you that is the easiest to get because you can just put it on a normal desk is called a Very Desk. Um, Very Desk, V-A-R-I Desk, we'll put it in the show notes. I have one, I think it's great. Don't make any money by recommending it, but it's just very easy. You put on top of your existing desk and boom, you have a standing desk and it comes fully assembled. You don't have to put anything together. Really nice. But making sure you have a good ergonomic workstation during this time, incredibly, incredibly important. My fifth piece of advice is to invest in noise-canceling headphones. 
there's very few houses in America where you're going to be able to work from a room and not hear everything else that's going on. If you can put on noise canceling headphones, some calm music, it's going to let you focus in on your work rather than hearing all the distractions around the house. This is an incredibly important investment and probably one that I would make um, and spend good money on. You know, I, I have a pair of Bose noise canceling headphones. I think they're great. I can put them on. You know, if the kids are running around, if Jake's building and knocking things over and doing construction projects in the house, you know, I'm still able to get my work done. He's still able to play and have a good time. And but, I make the Jake show. And he makes a Jake show. By the way, here's a plug. Jake has his own YouTube show. It's called The Jake Show. We'll put it in the show notes. Please go check it out. A lot of fun, right, Jake? Had a lot of fun on that show. Yeah. Um, good, good getting your own advertising in here, pal. Um, my, my sixth tip is you need to get outside and take walks, okay? And this could be a break from work if, you, if you're not taking calls. But if you're taking calls for work, you need to get a good noise-canceling headset for your phone. And when you're on a call, go walk around the block, walk around the circle, walk around your house, wherever you are. Get outside, get fresh air, get some sun on your face. So important not to just be inside all day. And in, if, you, if you're used to commuting, you're used to that time where you have to go outside, you get on the train, you get in your car, you get that kind of, you know, out of the, out of the house or office time. If you're not commuting anymore, all of a sudden you're just inside 24 seven. Really important to take those breaks, get outside, and if, you, and, if, and if you get calls, even better yet, I just, you know, I'm known in my neighborhood as the guy that just walks around the block endlessly because I'll be on a 30 minute call and I'll do four laps. You know, be, it, it, what else am I gonna do? Just sit on my desk and be on the phone? It's no fun. So get out there, get walking. You know, again, if you're on, best time to do it is if you're on the phone because you can kill two birds with one stone. Uh, but even if you, you're, not on phones, you're not on phone calls, you have to get up from your desk. You have to get outside, very, very important. You like going outside, buddy? Yeah. Yeah. What's your favorite thing to do outside? Play baseball. Play baseball. We've got a future baseball player here. Um, so my last main tip here, uh, number eight, ensure you work out. Uh, so easy during this time to just say, you know what, I'll get back to the gym when it reopens. Quite honestly, we don't know when that's going to happen, and we don't know when it's even going to be safe. You need to figure out how you're going to work out from home for the foreseeable future. So I would start investing in, you know, some minor equipment. I'm investing in some dumbbells, uh, make a try of mats, you know, things like this that I can do some very basic workouts from home. It's not going to be the same as the gym. I'm not expecting it to be, but I need to maintain some level of, of activity, right? Some level of working out. Maybe even look out new workouts that you could try, switch it up a little bit, but make sure you're setting aside 45 minutes to an hour every day to work out. Uh, may not be possible seven days a week. I try to do it four days a week right now. I used to do it more, but you know, being home and we a lot, a lot more going on. So, uh, but you have to make it a priority. If you, do, you know, if you don't set aside the time, it'll never happen. So, what I typically do to get that time for what it's worth is I have to take it away from work. Can't take it away from the kids. They need me. You know, I need to be there for them. But between eleven and twelve every day, I make sure nothing's on my schedule. Because that's an hour that I know I'm going to take for myself to maintain my physical health. And that's so important in today's environment, even just with the pandemic going on. The studies have shown that people in better physical health will handle the virus better if they get it. So make it a priority. If you don't have your health, you don't have much, right? So really, really important that you do that. How are we doing, Jake? Uh, you think these are good tips for people? Yeah. And speaking of baseball, mm -hmm. one of our baseball balls is still out there. It's still, we can see the baseball from the window, huh? Yeah. Daddy did not do a good job of picking up all the toys last night, um, did I? Uh, only one baseball is up there. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. <laughs> all right. So now we've kind of covered the main tips I have for how to work from home. I have some hacks for you, especially if you have young kids. I have, how, how old is Charlotte going to be? Seven. So I have a seven-year-old, a soon-to-be five-year-old in Jake, and we have a two-year-old son, Josh. Uh, uh, what? Shout out to actually six, but she's going to be seven on next birthday. Right. She'll be seven in, in July, right? Yeah. So we have three young kids. And, you know, anybody that has young kids in the house knows that it's incredibly difficult to try to work with young kids in the house because there's a lot of things that are going on. So here's some, here's some hacks that I've found, especially just recently during the quarantine period. The first is that you have to set up a playtime each day for the kids during the work hours. 
you're not gonna be able to work eight to five, eight to six, and not have time for the kids. So I have, a I have an hour set aside every single day from two to three o'clock in the afternoon that we go outside and play. Um, and if it's not nice outside, we go in the basement and we play, right? But they get an hour of dad time during the day so that we can have a lot of fun, get some energy out, give mom a break, and it's, it even gives dad a break from work. It's really nice. And so, but if you don't set aside that consistent time, the kids don't know when to expect it and they're constantly asking, when is it gonna happen? But if they know it's at two o'clock, their bodies get set. They know when it's time to go outside. And then it's, then it's a lot of fun, right? So set aside that hour and keep it the same every single day. If the kids, if you're still having an issue, I, I mean, I talked to Jake about this in Charlotte that, you know, daddy has to work because I need to buy food and, you know, buy toys, right? And, and all those kinds of things. And I think we can have those adult conversations with our children so they know what we're doing and they know why we're doing it. And I think that's really important too. Would you say so, Jake? Um, we don't really buy toys that often. <laughs> I would disagree with that, but I think, I, I, I know, how many trucks do you think you own? Um, a thousand. A thousand trucks, right? Yeah, we don't buy toys that often. Um, <laughs> oh, and the last one I have for you is, is a reminder of one of my first ones is, you know, when you're working, you need to try to stay out of view for a little while. So make sure you get all the food, get all the drinks you need. Don't be back and forth to the kitchen a hundred times because every time you walk back out in the main room of the house, you're probably going to get distracted. The kids are going to see you. It's a hard thing to do, you know, so really, really try to limit that when, when, you're, when you are having to work. All right, Jake, so that was most of the tips that I have developed over the years on how to work from home. Um, I do have a few from our staff. I asked our staff to give me their tips because they've all been working from home and I wanted to read some of them to you. This one comes from Tessa, our paralegal. She says that it's really important to get outside during lunch, um, that you, know, you shouldn't be stuck inside all day. It's very depressing to all of a sudden realize it's five o'clock and you haven't even stepped outside. So make sure to at least get outside during lunch. And also sometimes to try to split up your day. Uh, she indicated she's sometimes, instead of working straight through, doing things like working eight to 11, one to four and then five to seven and getting significant breaks in between. Because there's no need to commute, there's nowhere to go, so why not break up the work day a little bit? Hey, I think that's a great idea. Um, Grace, our digital marketing director, told us that she likes to work from different rooms in the house. Now, Grace doesn't have young kids, but she thinks that changing scenery throughout the day is really important um, and getting a, you know, a fresh view of where you are. And I agree with that. I actually like to move around my office in different locations in my office, uh, in my uh, self-isolation here. Uh, but I think that's a great idea. If, if you can move around a house and find different workstations during the day, get a you know, fresh perspective, that could be really helpful. So the last tip comes from Eric, who's a partner here at Gerben Law. And he says, you should really make sure you have hobbies that you can do throughout the day. He likes to play guitar, so he leaves a guitar by his desk and takes breaks to play. It really calms them down, resets them, lets them get back in the work. Eric's also been doing the work from home thing for over five years, and he says you really need to keep up your socialization. You need to make sure you're staying in touch with your friends, doing the Zoom calls, doing the phone calls. You know, for those of us who used to go into an office, you get the socialization there, and a lot of things tend to happen you know, in your social life that extend from work. When you're not having that, you really have to reach out to people, and that's something that all of us that have been working from home for years know, and we encourage you to do now if you're stuck working from home as well. So Jake, that's all our tips for today for everybody. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope this has been a wealth of information, giving you some good ideas on how to make your day-to-day -day a little bit better during the coronavirus pandemic and all the time we're gonna spend working from home the next few months. Um, I hope you're taking good care of your families. Make sure you're staying home. Make sure you're staying safe. If you have any additional tips, please, please email them to me, josh at joshgerbin.com. I would love your tips. You can even leave them in the comments, in the show, you know, in the show comments here. If you're watching on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up, right, Jake? Mm -hmm. Lots of thumbs up. We like thumbs up. Uh, leave comments. If you're, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or the, uh, some other podcasts that you're listening to, ratings and reviews help other people find our podcast. Please, please, please uh, take a few moments. Leave a rating or review. Very helpful to us if you do that. Uh, and Jake uh, has a reminder that Jake has The Jake Show on YouTube, which we'll put in the show notes. Please go check that out and give him a subscribe and a thumbs up as well. Right, Jake? And don't forget to watch What About My Sidekick. And I got 13 thumbs ups on that one. He got 13 thumbs up on his recent video. We got to go break the record on the next one, Jake. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll talk to you next time.